tells me everything. Well, then you shouldn't have come to Vegas. folks in the nocturnal so just want to start by saying this film was full of twists which i absolutely love in a psychological thriller under your direction dion taylor and hillary with you also as a producer in what ways did you both find yourselves collaborating on this project oh my gosh where does it start and where does it stop <laughs> i mean literally we collaborated on everything from the moment he asked to meet me and the moment we met we didn't stop I mean, really, we're still even collaborating. It's like, yeah. you know, it's just like in order to create something and you have that special relationship and that kind of uh, that vibe with one another, it's just, it takes off, it soars, you know, it's a gift. Yeah, I think, I think when you get to make, you know, when you get to make projects or do films and you do them independently and you get with people that understand and they ready to ride with you and go down the road with you. It's like, it doesn't, it never stops because here we are now, normally traditionally, Aurora, you would have an actress who would be like, all right, I'm done with the movie, I'm on to the next thing. But me and her been talking about how do we market the movie? What do we need to do? Like, damn, what do we need to go? Like, it's just dope that way, man. And I think this is the new world of, of, of doing films with great people. That's amazing. So definitely keeping that energy going even beyond the film, which is great. Yes. Um, that's great. Um, Hillary, you really seem to just dive right into your roles um, from your boxing sessions in Million Dollar Baby to meeting with astronauts when cast in the film Away. What was your selection process like in accepting this badass Femi Fatale role and the physical prep that even went into that? Well, I mean, Dion and I definitely talked about what the physicality of this character would be like. So there was definitely training that went into it to make sure that my physical appearance looked like a cop. Um, and, um, you know, um, and then the, the actual other aspect of it, the like emotional kind of, uh, roller coaster emotions of her really came from just understanding who she is as a person and what her motivations were, you know, and it's all comes down to being a flawed person who made a grave mistake that she has so much remorse about and wants to rectify and make right. And so she does that and wants a second chance, you know, and that's also, that's something we can all relate to. Um, how she goes about it when the second chance doesn't work out is maybe not how everyone would handle things, but it's fun. Right. <laughs> well, it definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. Well, edge of my couch cushion, but not <laughs> for now. Um, but speaking of selection processes, Dion, um, can you talk to me a little bit about yours and the moment that you knew that you found your detective Valerie um, and Derek Tyler as well? Well, I knew I had, I knew who I wanted for Val while I was writing the script with David Lowry. <laughs> like I had already known who the character was. It was Hilary Swank. And uh, I had been a big fan of her work for a very long time. And look, you get people that come on these things and lie all the time. I'm not <laughs> lying. Like, like I really was like, it's Hilary Swank. And I went after her and I met her and the universe and the universe put us together because I just knew she could give me the level of acting at a 10 that we needed. She could give us the moments of not knowing what she's thinking that we needed. And ultimately I knew she could give me the range of being the alpha and being the most dominant person on screen opposite a man at times that I needed. And she was awesome, man. And then putting her against Michael Ely, who's one of my favorites, mm -hmm. I just knew it would push him, pull him. And I knew that he was that caliber of actor that if he was able to spar with someone like her, it would be explosive. And that happened. Mm -hmm. That happened. It was definitely amazing to watch and a great experience. And I look forward to watching it again, actually. Thank you guys sitting down. So much. See it again, Dan See it again. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, guys. You. Have yeah, a great holiday. You. So yeah, I just want to jump right into this. Your character, Derek, seems to really go through an emotional roller coaster throughout this film while literally fighting for his life, and best, especially in those like hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes. Yes. So what was it like working through those really intense scenes, especially alongside Hilary Swank? Um, poetic, um, you know, um, it, it's poetic because of the circumstances of, of the characters, right? And at the same time, it was poetic because, you know, she's regarded as one of the best to ever do it. And so at that point, you know, it was, um, 
kind of amazing because you realize, okay, this is, this is the level. This is the level that you want to do it on. And Hillary is so physically like, she's like a specimen physically, <laughs> right? So she's very athletic and she is, you know, all of that stuff is highly choreographed and she, she wanted it all. Like she, she was like, bring it. Like the gun work, the fighting, the combat, all of that. She was just like, bring it. And there is no like intimidation, you know, <laughs> like there's no gender intimidation with Hillary. Right. She will punch me in the face. It's not. <laughs> oh, I hope that didn't happen. <laughs> huh? So I hope that didn't happen by accident. <laughs> no, no. I mean, not to my knowledge, but, but I do know that she brought it and, and, you know, I, I, I brought it and, you know, I think that's, that's what, that's what shows on screen. Definitely, definitely. Um, and if you could just even talk to me about what it was like working for Dion Taylor for a second time around since filming The Intruder, and what was your reaction when he even just brought this project to you? Okay. Um, well, you know, working with Dion for the second time was, um, you know, in a lot of ways easier. Um, and I was happy for both of us because we were actually, it felt like a bit of a graduation for us in that we were raising the bar a little bit from The Intruder to Fatal. I think The Intruder is a good popcorn movie. I think mm -hmm. Fatal is um, a bit more nuanced, more of an LA noir thriller and um, a, a, has a much more darker tone to it that, that is so consistent throughout the film. And that's hard to, to maintain um, without good direction. And so I think we all kind of raised our game and then you know you bring in Hillary Swank and you know all, not only do you have to raise your game but you have to kind of um you know you're now adding a third party right and and Hillary blended in perfectly you know obviously I had more experience with Dion but that doesn't matter to someone of you know of Hillary's talent and uh your second question was what um and his like how you what your reaction was when he even just oh, brought, when he brought the project, the project. Uh, well, he, he, you know, he, he hyped it up, which he always does, you know, <laughs> Ely, Ely, I got some force, man. I got some force. <laughs> I love the energy. <laughs> that's, that's how he calls you. I'm not lying. That's how he calls you. And then he's like, man, listen. And he told me, and then he told me what the project was. And he told me who Val was and it was Hillary Swank. And I was like, okay, I'm in, let me read the script. <laughs> So, nice. you know, I mean, worst case scenario, I was going to say no um, <laughs> after I said yes. But uh, the minute he told me, you know, Hillary was going to be a villain, I wanted to be a part of that. And, and then I was absolutely pleased with Derek's trajectory and where he was going and just yeah. how tightly wound he was as a character throughout the film. Um, and in an interview you did back, actually, I think when shooting this film, you had mentioned part of the joy in what you do is putting yourself in situations that you can't handle. I just want to know if you can embellish on that and um, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, you know, when you do a genre film that's a, a thriller, right? Oftentimes the goal is to take someone who seems like an everyday person and put them in extraordinary circumstances. And what happens, right? And oftentimes the movie goer thinks they're smarter than that person. They think they're smarter than the characters. They know what they would do. When in reality, I think we've all seen this year, you don't know what you're gonna do until it happens to you most times. Right. So, um, you know, under these circumstances, you have to really dig deep as a character and try and figure out what would this person do versus what would I do? Right, and, and, and that's the distinction you have to make from, from, from the jump. And for me, this was um, abundantly clear that, that Derek, um, Derek has some judgment issues. Uh, <laughs> he, has some, you know, he has a blind spot when it comes to judgment. Um, I think he you know, personally dropped the ball a little bit. And again, those consequences were catastrophic. Absolutely. Well, definitely made for a great film and a great experience. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you, Aurora. Have a good holiday. You too. Take care. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Uh, you, look like a, you look like an Aurora. Thank you. Look, you. Yeah, most people don't look like the name. You look like an Aurora. Yes. Wow, that's the first time I've heard it, but I will take that. Thank you so much.
So I just want to jump right into this um, mm -hmm. and just start off by saying you have been quoted as saying when selecting roles, you're always looking for something that's different. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me a little bit about that and why this was a good project for you to say yes to? So I think career longevity for a lot of people is to stay in their lane, sort of do the same thing that they've been doing and wait for offers to come along because they understand what people expect from them and they ride that train. I'm always like, I didn't get into this business to sort of be predictable, to sort of be the guy that when he walks on the screen, you kind of know what he's doing and you kind of know what he's gonna, what to expect from him. When I look at this role, guy is um, living in the moment. He's not caring about the, tomorrow. He wants to have fun now. He's got access to money. He's got access to a private plane. He works for, you know, with, him, with his best friend. He's up for a party and he's the plug. If you need something, that's the guy to go to. He's reckless. That's that's different for me, and I like I like playing people who are different. And so this for me is what I what I what I'm always looking for when I'm looking for a role, something different, and different from what I played last time, different from myself. You know, if it speaks to me, I, I get inspired. Nice. Um, and speaking of your character Wraith and Michael Ely's character Derek, they share um, a business and a tight friendship. But in real life, you also share being directed by Deion Taylor for a second time around. So how did that sense of familiarity help lend to the chemistry between your characters? Or was that something that kind of developed more organically, would you say? Well, no, I mean, I think I think Deion, you know, made a point to all of us got together, had coffee. Um, he, um, myself, uh, Michael, Tyron, sort of build the bond, understand, you know, who we are, just hang out, just, you know, you know, talk um, about life. And, and, and things that we experience, things we have in common, and having that familiarity and that ease helps when you go on set because then you understand the people you're dealing with and who you're working with, and it just makes things a lot easier. So you can sort of play and not worry about, you know, you know, you know anybody, how they feel, because you understand, you, you, you're familiar with them. Right, right, I can definitely see that from the film. Um, and I actually watched an interview that you did recently in speaking about your cast, where you said, we're not the normal set of players in this genre. You yourself have taken on roles that really kind of like break the mold of the representation that we're used to seeing on screen. So can you talk to me about the importance of role diversity as a whole for you? Yeah, I think I think there's one school of thought that goes, you know, representation is important and people want to see roles that represent the culture. That's one there's one there's one school of thought that's about that. And the other school of thought, which I I adhere to that, but I also adhere to the idea that, you know, everything that you do can't be about race. And so it's about making sure that you are representing and also playing characters that are not speaking from a place of always the culture first and foremost, you know, because we all have as human beings have a sort of a sort of um, common bond and a common experience that we all share that is just about life. And it's not about where you came from. That's always inherent, inherent in who you are, but we all have something that's very familiar because we have the human experience that we're dealing with. So when I, I'm playing like a priest or a doctor or a lawyer, it's not always going to be about, you know, about me being a black. That's inherent. We see that. We know that's there. Um, right. I don't have to tell anybody about that. It's about now, what is this experience? And so if you can sort of stay away from that sometimes, then you can allow people to sort of relax and see our story and seek us as human beings and not always be about a culture that they don't understand or that they're learning um, about, you know? So it's it's two tra two ways of thinking about it, but I, I like to kind of go back and forth between both because I think they're both important. Nice, and we definitely all have stories to tell and I love seeing yours on film. Thank you again so much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you, Aurora. Patel has an amazingly talented cast with a lot of household names, including Hilary Swank. Um, she also sits as a producer on this film as well. You recently mentioned in an interview that she taught you a lot on set. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I mean, I think for me, you know, the creative pr process that she puts in on the script on the development side was um, really eye opening for me, like just her process, really just watching her overall internal process on how she thinks of things and looks at things um, for a creative, from a creative perspective um, with the script. And then also just on set, like watching her get into character and how she studies and adjusts over and over again from the littlest thing um, to make sure that she's delivering that character exactly how the filmmaker wants it on that page. So it's just, I mean, listen, I'm behind the camera for a reason, you know what I mean? So to see her like, I mean, what she goes through to accomplish the delivery that she has is just incredible.
Well, it definitely was amazing. And honestly, based on the previous films that you produced, such as Black and Blue and The Intruder, just to name a few, you really seem to have the psychological thriller genre in the bag, um, <laughs> like truly. But what particularly spoke to you about this project, the ones you do, that you made you want to like produce behind that? Um, you know, listen, everything that we produce or that I produce is is something that I'm passionate about. I mean, I really love this movie because you really got to see, you know, a black and brown couple successful in front of the camera that that you don't typically get to see. You know what I mean? Now, no arrogance came from a regular background, worked hard, turned the corner and was able to be successful. And I think that's important to see um, in front of the camera. And I think you know, again, like I love the thriller aspect. I think for movies, when you get that hour and a half, two hours, it's important for you to be able to go through that ride and forget whatever's going on in your life and be able to just experience an escape is priceless. And so when I get those scripts or those books and I'm just turning the page and I can't stop, that's kind of how I dictate the right one for me. I hear you. And actually, that's something that I actually really noticed a lot in this film. Um, I really enjoyed that actually in the film as well. And many others produced by Hidden Empire Films, where they showcase successful, affluent Black and brown people in the roles that we really don't often get to see, like how you mentioned. But yeah. do you feel like some of the industry is still kind of playing catch up with that? I mean, Yes. I mean, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I think everybody sees it and it's clear. I think we've come a, a really long way. I think we do have a lot to go. Um, but I think, you know, different scripts have different meanings. You know, everything is not for, you know, Caucasian or Black or Latino or whatever, right? It, it's really based on the script. And for me, it's picking the best character. It doesn't have doesn't have a color you know, associated to it. When I'm looking at it, it's really more or less who can deliver these lines in these scenes, like what's on the page. But I think um, it, it's hard because Hollywood, old Hollywood is, is very set in their ways, you know what I mean? And there was, there, was a, there was a way of doing things, if you will. You know, whether it was right or wrong, it was just the way it was done. And I think, time is changing, time is evolving, and there's changing of the guards. And I think the new, fresh, creative minds will bring new, fresh, creative ideas and, and hopefully change the way people think and be able to cast everyone across the board so everybody can have an equal opportunity to have these roles. And that's what we tried to do with Michael and Hillary. I mean, and not just Michael, I mean, Hillary, she's never played this kind of character and been in this kind of movie, which has right. opened up a lot of doors for her in a different world. So it can go either way, you know? I agree. And I think we still have a ways to go, but with your company and your creative minds, we are <laughs> on the way there. Thank you That's, so you're much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, Happy thank you. holidays. You too. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye.